but take everything we just talked about and apply it to what we're going to talk about now, okay? Because Paul is talking and saying, Hymenaeus and Philetus were upsetting the faith of some because he was saying the res- they were saying the resurrection had already happened. You know, Paul was going around building houses, so to speak. You ever do this like when you're a kid? You have a table and you like have cups or building blocks or something like that. And you're building these and you're building a big old stack, right? Because you're going to make a big tower, right? Okay, so you're building a big old stack and you get to a certain level and it falls. And then you're like, okay, we'll do something a little different here. Stack them again, get up a little higher, it falls. Okay, so let's try this again. Get it. And finally you get it like where it's huge, right? And your little kid eyes are like, wow, this is amazing. That's as high as I could reach up there. And so you step back and you look at this thing and you're like, man, this is awesome. I'm so good. Look how amazing I am. And just at that moment, your little brother comes in and smashes the whole thing down. You got to watch out in the front row here. I, I warned him. I told him all like you're, you're in the spit zone here. How many times that happened to you? I went to preschool. Like that happened all the time. Some random kid would come up and just knock the whole thing over. <laughs> Is that very Christian-like? <laughs> he said, then you dick. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. But that's what happened to Paul here. He was building houses, going around building these churches. And then these two guys come in, and they're wrecking it. And at this moment, Paul has two options. He can either go after these guys and start fighting them and trying to rebuild everything that he had already built that they're ruining, or he can trust God and allow God to do the work. Look at what he says in verse 19. He says, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows who are his. The Lord knows who are his. What he's saying to us is God's got it. I know it's difficult because it's oftentimes that the person that we want to receive the Lord the most is the person closest to us, right? Close family member, close friend. And they just won't for some reason. And you feel like if you just did a little bit more, if you just went a little further, if you told them a little bit more, if you like took the scriptures and just gave them a bunch of scriptures that they would all of a sudden, like a light would come on and it would just happen for them. But again and again, you do it and it doesn't. And you do it and it doesn't. And you do it again and it doesn't. And you're like, Lord, what's going on here? What's happening? What's happening is we've taken it upon ourselves instead of allowing the Lord to do the work. Instead of allowing the Lord to go before us to prepare a heart. I like to garden. Is anybody in here garden? Even a little garden? Yeah, okay. Have you ever noticed, maybe you guys can back me up on this. I've noticed in my garden, if I plant a little plant and then I'm like really cautious about that plant and what I'm doing, I'm watering it, being very attentive to it, making sure that nothing hurts it and really like, you know, just really taking care of this plant and like, you know, being a a helicopter parent around this plant. Just doing everything I can. I've noticed that that plant doesn't do as good as all the other plants. And I'm like, I don't understand this, Lord. I take care of this little plant. I do everything. I give it everything it needs. I take care of every little need that it has. And yet it doesn't do as well as all the other plants that I don't even care about. How could this be? All the other plants are growing up all big and strong and giving me vegetables and all kinds of stuff. And my one little plant is looking so sorry and sad. Look, it's the same thing with people. You know, in the parable of the sower, 
Jesus says a man went out to sow seeds. Some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came immediately, picked up those seeds, went off with them. Some fell on rocky soil, and though they sprung up quickly, they had no root. So when the sun came out, it scorched them, they died. Then some were, some were in shallow soil. And so the seed took, and the seed came up, but then the weeds came up with it and choked it out. And they didn't bear fruit. But then yet some fell on good soil. And they grew up strong, had good roots, and they bore fruit. Some 50, some 100 fold, lots of fruit. Lots and lots. Jesus said, hey, look, do you see the comparisons here? There were three places that didn't bear fruit. God still went out. God is the sower, right? God still went out to sow the seed. Though he knew some would fall along the path. Though he knew some would fall on the rocky ground. Though he knew some would fall on the shallow soil and be choked out. He still sowed seeds. But it was only in one place that those seeds actually bore fruit. You see, God is doing this work. He knows who's going to receive him and who's not, but he still goes out to sow the seeds. What we have to do in our own lives is understand that God is in control of this, 